What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Now any gamer will tell you that they absolutely hate when they reach this point in their favorite game. So you've done the main campaign, you've done all the side missions, so what the hell is there left to do in Fallout? Well that's easy, you go to the PlayStation Store and you download the DLC. Like right now. Like I mean seriously, stop watching this review and go download this right now. I guess it kind of goes without saying. But similar to the Elder Scrolls, Fallout 4 is one of Bethesda's flagship titles. Similar to other AAA titles, Fallout 4 is one of the most anticipated titles to date. Since its release, it's pretty much unanimous that it's an overwhelming success. Fallout 4 is one of those titles that really redefined where the industry is going. So today we're going to be taking a look at Fallout 4's most ambitious DLC yet, Far Harbor. So, if you remember from the main campaign story, you eventually run into Nick Valentine and his detective agency. Now this is one of the key components of this DLC, as you really can't unlock it until you finish the Nick Valentine detective agency storyline. I'm sure this is not going to be a problem for most of us, and if you've already done that, it will unlock a quest called Far From Home. Essentially, the main story revolves around you accepting a case from the detective agency in order to find a young woman who has mysteriously disappeared. Through your skills as a detective, you soon find out that she has traveled off to the coast of Maine to a mysterious island called Far Harbor. Now for some reason, Far Harbor has suffered with much higher levels of radiation, so it makes it a much more feral world, and therefore more dangerous. During your time in Far Harbor, you're going to see some of the factions returning from the main game. Mostly the synths, the religious fanatics, the children of the Atom, and the local townspeople. Now, obviously this DLC or the add-on is not as big as the main quest, but it is very big. By my calculations, it added between 20 and 25 hours of gameplay. And you might actually be able to extend that runtime if you do every single side quest or every side mission that all the locals want you to do. Now many of the enemy types that you'll encounter on this add-on are similar to the main quest, basically the irradiated ghouls. But one of the things that I do have to mention, these are not your standard enemy types in terms of difficulty. You have to remember that the radiation level on this island is a lot higher, so these ones are a lot quicker and a lot tougher to take down. I am really pleased to say that we're introduced to some really cool new enemy types. It's really cool because given the theme of this DLC, these mutated nightmares are inspired by the ocean, so it makes for some very interesting looking creatures. It's also worth mentioning that the AI in these enemy types have been vastly improved. They really use their environment to their advantage, and you have to be a little more strategic to take them down. The loot system has also been incrementally improved, and I noticed that I was getting some pretty sweet items every time I took down a really big boss. These subtle improvements are a welcome sight, especially for somebody who's reached a level 50, you still get that sense of progression in this world. One of the other things that I must mention about this DLC is the hauntingly beautiful score. In addition to the obvious changes to the topography of the land and the world that you're in, this score really puts you in a different mindset. There is this subtle melancholy to the music, almost a lamentation as you come to the realization that this thing, this cataclysm that happened to the world, didn't just happen in the Boston area, but it's affecting the whole globe. Similar to the main game, I absolutely love the art style and direction here. The subtle details throughout your journey of this dead and decaying world really force you to stop and look at the beauty. As you take in this world, you come to the sobering realization that essentially the world ended and will be forever draped in 50s Americana. However, I'm sad to say that not everything is perfect in this DLC. Now, Bethesda's known for making really great games, but it's also known for making things that are really buggy at launch. Now, I'm sure you've already noticed this, but this island is really foggy, and it actually reminds me of the original Silent Hill games. Now, nostalgia aside, the fog is also one of the reasons that this DLC really pissed me the hell off. Now, don't get me wrong, the fog is beautiful, but it also kills the damn frame rate. 
certain parts of the game, the fog is pretty intense, but it also makes the game sputter along. It got so bad that I actually had to stop playing the game because the frame rate was making me nauseous. I finally figured out that if I play in first person, that the frame rate doesn't drop as much when you're in a heavily fogged area. But that's no excuse, you shouldn't have to choose between one mode of gameplay or one perspective. Now this is the PS4 version, so I can only attest to the performance on the PS4, but my game did crash three times. Now those minor performance annoyances aside, this is still a really great DLC and really worth your time and money. Now unfortunately I never actually got to review Fallout 4, so here's my little brief mini review synopsis of what I thought was really amazing about the game. Given Fallout 4's themes, I thought this was completely appropriate. Decimated by nuclear war, Boston has become a wasteland. However, this is merely a fraction of the complex narrative. Fallout 4 asks some very sobering questions about human nature, xenophobia, classism, and morality to name a few. Filled with political satire, we can see that Bethesda Studios not only wanted to bring another engrossing title into this highly immersive franchise, but also challenges players to consider these themes in their daily lives. In this regard, this game is not classic escapism as, say, Call of Duty, but instead should be experienced as a social, political commentary about our current ideals and also as a warning of what kind of world we may leave behind for future generations. Alright everybody, so that's my official review on Fallout 4's DLC, Far Harbor. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Mainlanders ain't nothing but trouble. Put the damn gun down.